Welcome back, Sully here. We're going to be talking about something that um, is something we kind of referenced earlier, parametric equations, and also vectors. And it's called vector-valued functions. Vector-valued functions, all right? And a lot of this has to do with how we talk about the motion of particles. So I have this wonderful picture of things that might be particles moving around, dancing, all right? So here we go. Let's take a look. So the position of a particle moving in a plane that is given by a parametric function, x of t, y of t, so two functions making up like a vector, may be expressed as a vector-valued function. So we can take this and express it as a value, a vector-valued function. In other words, we can plug in our t, find our x component, plug in our y, find a y component, all right? Or we can have these being functions right here. The magnitude of the position vector at the time t gives us the distance of the particle from the origin. So let's take a look at one. Consider the vector valued function. So we have our x component function is t plus 2, and our y uh, component function is t squared. So for t is negative 2, I would plug in negative 2. I'd get 0 for my x, and I would get 4 for my y value. Now, it's very common to think of this as a uh, coordinate, but it's not. It is a vector, so I'm going 0 and up 4. All right, I want you to remember that. Now, the location is the endpoint. That's where the particle is. If I took the magnitude of this, which one, this would be very easy, 0 squared plus 4 squared is 16. The square root of 16 would be 4. So that would be the distance the particle is from the origin. All right. All right, let's do the next one. Plug in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Over 1, up 1. Again, that is now my the position of the particle with that vector. Plug in 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. 0 squared. Now we have a third position of our particle. And we have a graph kind of forming here. All right. Plug in 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And again, the, here's a tricky part. I've done this myself before. Don't tell anybody. Once you get this part, you're like, oh, I'm going to plug that in. But I'm always plugging in my value of t, right? So 1 squared is 1. So 3 over 1 up. This is our fourth vector location, right? And 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 squared is 4, 4 over, 4 up. That's our last vector location. All right, now, here's the thing. What kind of shape is being formed? Now, I'm going to take away the vectors and just have the endpoints, all right? And you'll see in the answers that I really just have the endpoints because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about where the position is there at when at time negative 2, right, or time 0. So what does that form? Oh, this one forms a quadratic. Now, you're going to see some pretty interesting formations when, as you go through these, depending on things. For example, you could have your x value be t squared and your y value be, valuable, value be t plus 2, and that would change things up, all right? Your graph might be something that doesn't look like a normal function, all right? So uh, keep that in mind as you go along. But here, the key here is I really want you to remember, these are vectors. They're not coordinates. It's the endpoint of that vector that gets you here, all right? Subtle difference, very subtle difference. I totally understand that, but uh, that's what I need you to uh, think about as you're going through this. All right, when we looked at these vector-valued functions, we need to talk about uh, a couple of things. Number one, the domain of a vector-valued function is the intersection of the domains of both of the component functions. So the domain of the x component and the domain of the y component, that's going to be the domain of our vector-valued function. So if we take a look here, let's find the domains of each of the components and then of the vector-valued function in, in total, all right? Let's let's uh, recall a few things. Domain. What are we have a, a couple of rules, right? Number one, um, we cannot divide by zero. That that's a big one. <laughs> Number two, 
we cannot take the square root or actually any even root of a negative number. Okay, Th those are like the biggest quantifiers for um, domain. So let's take a look here. T squared minus three. All right, so our, our, am I dividing by zero or am I dividing by anything that could possibly equal zero? No. Am I taking the square root of anything or an even root of anything? No. Are there any disqualifiers here? Can I put any value of x in? Yeah, I can. So for my x component here, my x component would be all real numbers. Remember, we write it like that, or you could say all real numbers. Over here, we definitely have a problem here. We cannot divide by zero. So when does t minus two? It cannot be zero, so t cannot equal two. So our y component is gonna be from negative infinity to two, and from two to positive infinity. Because it's all the real number, it can be any number other than two. All right, so then our vectored value function would be the domain of that. It's where these two overlap now. This says it can be any number, and this says it can be any number but two, so the intersection here is actually just gonna be this y component. All right, so let's try one that maybe has a little bit more qualifiers. Let's look at this one. This function, we have a square root issue. And I know that inside here, x plus four has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Because it cannot be a negative number. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative four. All right, so my x component is gonna be negative four, all right? And it could equal that, couldn't it? All right, and it's gonna go all the way to infinity. Over here, my t, can, t minus five cannot equal zero, so t cannot equal five. So my y component is gonna be all the real numbers except for five. So negative infinity to five, and then five to infinity. All right, so now let's look at our vector value function here. We need the intersections of these things, right? Maybe look at a number line. Let's talk about the big ones. So I have negative four. So it could go, uh, negative four could be anything greater than that. And then at positive five, it cannot be positive five. This one, it can be anything but positive five. So the intersection here can't have anything here because it would restrict the first one. All these numbers are good. Oop, cannot be here. And then the rest of these are good. So if I have the union or the intersection of these, it would be anything greater than negative four or equal to negative four, but not five. So let's start with negative four to five, and then from five to infinity, okay? All right, the vector value function, so the ones we've been working with, can also be used to express the velocity of a particle moving in a plane at different times. So this is a velocity vector, all right? At time t, the sign of the x component indicates if the particle is moving left or right. So if we have a negative x component, it's moving left. If we have a positive x component moving, it's moving right. And the sign of y of t indicates if the particle is moving up or down. So positive y component, it's moving up. Negative y component, it's moving down. All right. The magnitude of the velocity vector gives us the speed of the particle. So let's take a look at one. Let's say we have this velocity value of uh, vector valued function. Whoa, that's a mouthful. All right. And we know that we want to find how fast and what direction it's going at time pi over three. Just one specific time. It could be doing a whole lot of other stuff, but right here we want to know what it's doing. So we're going to plug in pi over three. So two times the cosine of pi over three is one half. Four times the sine of pi over three is radical three over two. So our vector now would be one and 
2 radical 3. So I know that it's moving to the right because the x component is positive and up because the y component is positive. Now I can also find the speed it's traveling at. We're going to find the magnitude of that vector. So 1 squared plus 2 radical 3 squared. 1 squared is 1. 2 radical 3 squared is 4 times 3, 12. So our speed is radical 13, or I'm going to put approximately 3.6. All right. That way we have a speed. So it's moving right and up at a speed of 3.6. Now, in this case, we'll call it units. Um, we don't have uh, any units at, in particular that we're talking about right here, but if it gave us units, we could use units to find that, all right? The key thing here is all this is stuff we know. We know how to find, now we know how to find our vector using the val val vector valued function. We know how to find a magnitude that gives us our speed. It's all about understanding things. So these vector valued functions really help us with the movement of particles, where they're at, where, when they're at, how far they are from zero, and their speed. All right. Best of luck. See you next time.